So now we're going to actually go into nighttime. So this is my point to prove myself. Because if I don't prove myself, I don't get the McLaren and I can't use the wheel that I'm using right now because then I'm going to have to either put a sticky note over it that says Aston Martin or something. Or Porsche. But set up. Um, safe. Capable of good lap times with a hint of understeer. Or aggressive. I'm going to roll the dice. I'm aggressive. Because I've explored the track. I know how it works. I know where the breaking points are. Loosely in the dry. I'm going to gamble. Uh, pit limiter. I love this. Having a manual pit limiter is just so fun. So we're going to go... We weren't at the same speed that we were previously, so yeah, I don't think I needed to <laughs> break at 175. But we don't have warm tires, and yeah. So here we go, turn three. I know what we're looking for, about 175 to 150 in there. It's going to be coming up. That's 200. No, that's 200, and that's 150. I'm surprised that they don't have any light sources whatsoever in this track because this is just terrifyingly dark. You would just imagine that you're going to find a deer coming around the next corner, but, you know, I'd imagine that the track fences have something to negate that. Well, that was a little bit late. Saved it. I'm glad I went for the aggressive setup. These tires feel stickier. They they feel like I've got a lot more grip. It feels like that I can do things that I wasn't supposed to earlier. We're going to go a little bit after the bridge. Locked up the brakes a little bit because uh, tires went a little bit light. Oh, shoot. Yeah. It was a warm-up lap. And I wasn't going to be setting any lap records coming out of the pit lane, that's for sure. So, you know, technically it sucks that I went out there. Well, at the same time, too, it's, it's not the end of the world. This just feels faster. It's amazing what the setup feels like. Like a different setup. I'm going to start trying to go for these lap times. Right here. I honestly can start shooting for 175. I really think I can go there. Oh. I honestly don't know how I'm comparing against the other drivers right now, but just... It could be the fact that I'm night driving, that it's I'm coming up on th stuff what seems like to be faster. 150. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Didn't need to really hit that curb there. I'll probably have to adjust my entrance next time around. That was good. That was a good one. Again, that's the problem, not knowing exactly where my breaking point is on there, but that was probably the best turn seven I've done maybe ever I thought that was at the 50 I don't know this seems late now that I think about it we're breaking out the bridge and we're letting off the brakes so we're not locking up going into turn eight Ten's exit was as per usual awkward Coming down through the back side of pit straight. I'm going to go... Yeah, that was technically a little bit after the whiteboards. I'm going to slowly put the pressure on the gas. There we go. Two one. Not bad. 
but I do have improvement to make, that's for sure. Where's 200? 200. Call it 150. Let's see where that puts us. Apparently, track limits is where 150 puts us. That is good to know, so it's 100% gotta be before 150. I know I, there's not much comparison, but I've seen a lot of F1 cars go deep and then go really on that line, that inside, rubbing up on the curb on turn two. Which seems weird to me, because it seems like you'd want to break early coming into turn one so you can get a wider turn two so you have a faster exit. But it just seems like that they might, it might be just a little bit too awkward. I don't know. There could be a little bit of physics involved with inertia that you're trying to slow down harder going into turn one and the inertia is just keeping you, keep pushing you. So technically maybe the ideal line is to rub up on the outside of turn one and technically inside of turn two. I don't know. I'll find out. So because I knew... Uh-oh. There we go. Because I knew that the track time was invalidated, I was going to try some more... outrageous driving styles, driving lines, just to see where to put me time-wise. I technically can brake later on the whiteboards. Probably at the 150 board. But we'll try this once again. I've got two good laps I can set through here. So, 150 is not an option. <laughs> as we found in the, in the daytime. So 175 as per usual. I was riding the inside of that curb. That really, really screwed up some timing. Well, that's not the end of the world because I definitely have rode up on the curbs like that before and was able to save it. That was 175 again. That, I honestly don't think I carry the same speed through the pit straight that I do out of the exit of turn three. So that's why I think 150 works out so well. Yeah, I think 50 is the spot where you want to break on that one. Alrighty, just don't make any s massive mistakes. As he says, going wide, going, <laughs> breaking late, coming out of that. <laughs> oh well. I knew it wasn't going to be a fast time anyway, so I know for a fact the bridge is the last spot you want to be breaking. Nothing past it. So this one isn't going to be necessarily true to form, true to life. Because I don't think I had the same speed coming out of turn 10. Well, I know I wasn't because it was coming out of the gravel pit out of turn 10. We've got one last good one. So let's make it count. I definitely shifted up into sixth gear a little bit early. So I feel like that I lost out on some time. That was 175. That's good. Ooh. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. I'm only one... Oh. I'm only 15 tenths down. That's a disappointment. And I figured I was going to be able to carry more through that. That felt like a really good turn one entrance. 150 is the spot to be breaking. I did not touch the curbs at all. That's where the time's made up. And 
There we are. Beautiful. Gonna break. Yeah, 50 felt weird. That felt good, though. Okay. This is straight here. I'm not even going to try pronouncing Italian. I tried pronouncing um, French early, French earlier. Where am I? Where am I? Oh my God! I forgot where I was going. Ah ha ha! Ah. That's what happens when you try commentating and you go off on a tangent. I know there are two bridges on that straightaway. <sighs> so mad. Second up. Yeah. And they're posting 156s. 157s. <laughs> so with that last lap... Oh, they're cutting out two seconds now out of Sector 2? Come on. That's not realistic. There needs to be, like, an AI difficulty between... Normal and hard. Yep, let's see the Porsche or the Jaguar. So in most cases, I generally speaking like to choose the Porsche out of these two choices here, as it is a much cooler vehicle. However, I did do a little bit of testing, and it turns out that the weight distribution of the engine being in the back, um, I've never really been able to correct oversteer with the McLaren wheel or even with my other wheel here. It's a little bit difficult for whichever reason. So I think I'm actually going to try out for the first time the Jaguar here and I'm actually going to be very interested to see how it performs versus the Porsche here as the weight distribution is better. However, the vehicle might not be as powerful, might not be as cool per se, but having a rear wheel drive vehicle with a V8, you really can't go wrong with that. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, maybe sharing it with a friend or two always helps around here quite a bit. Got a lot more Reset of Corsa uh, Competizione career uh, videos coming on up, so stay tuned for all of that. Of course, my name is Matt, and thanks all so much for watching. Hope you enjoy your day. Take care. Bye.